hello hello um, before telling you what God wanted me to understand through the stories of Job and Lazarus I need to tell you one important piece of information and I forgot to tell you uh, some days before God started to speak to me straight uh, he spoke to me powerfully through a prophecy that came through my sister uh, you need to understand that coming from a Lutheran feet on the ground background, these kind of things are pretty. They were pretty new new for me. Uh, this was probably my first experience of of God speaking straight to me. This prophecy. Uh, of course, later I've understood that God spoke to me uh, already long before, probably all my life. But I just didn't believe it. I didn't believe it could be the case because I thought these things were something special for some special people, and I wasn't anything special. I was just an ordinary guy. Anyway, uh, one evening I was sitting. Uh, I was visiting my sister's family. It was pretty late. Everybody had gone to sleep, and I was about to leave home when me and my sister decided to pray shortly. We prayed for my situation, for my wife, for all the people related to our situation, when during this prayer, my sister started suddenly to, to speak with an unknown language. That language was really beautiful. And I felt extremely good. I felt that the presence of God this unconditional love filled the whole room. And then suddenly my sister started to translate the language and the message was straight to me. The prophecy was quite a long prophecy and I don't remember all the details but here's the main content. <laughs> my son Mika you don't need a sign. Just keep your eyes on my cross and follow me. This is a spiritual battle that only I, Jesus, can win. I have won it already. Just keep your eyes on my cross, on my loving face and follow me. You don't need a sign. Just remember that I am, I am, I am. For many days before this prophecy, I had prayed that God would give me a sign, something that would prove me that he was in control of my situation. God didn't answer, no sign. And I had never told about this request of a sign to anybody. And now suddenly Jesus spoke straight to me through another person who couldn't know about my request for a sign. That gave me a lot of hope that God was in control of the whole mess. But to be honest I didn't understand much of the message at that point. Only when God told me to read the story of Job and the resurrection of Lazarus later and started to reveal the meaning of those two stories the prophecy started to make sense too how? well um, when I read those two stories several times because I, I didn't get it um, God revealed me that both stories tell about the same thing God has a plan And when he has a plan, things will always happen the way he wants and when he wants. Job was a righteous man, a man who had given his whole life to God. But one day, God allowed awful things to happen to him. Awful things. Job lost everything he had, his family, his property, his health. His friends came to instruct him. 
and accused him for being guilty for what he had what had happened. God would never do this kind of things without a reason. This must be because of what you have done, my friend. That's what they said. But Job couldn't agree. He knew he knew he wasn't perfect. But he had always done his best to follow God's will in his life. And suddenly it seemed that God had abandoned him. Job couldn't understand it, so he wanted some answers. And God gave those answers to him in such a powerful form that in the end of the story God, uh, Job was able to say these words. My ears had heard of you but now my eyes have seen you. God had a plan, and to fulfill his plan, he allowed Satan to torment Job. Why? Why would God do that? Because God wanted to wake up Job's friends and all the people around him. Job was just a scapegoat in a spiritual battle that was decided somewhere up there between God and Satan. And through that, God meant to lead something beautiful. A revival. The same story with Lazarus. Lazarus had to die so that people would believe. Jesus made it very clear to the disciples. He said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and for your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Disciples didn't understand. Neither did the sisters of Lazarus, Martha and Mary. How could they? Who would believe that a man who had been in the tomb for four days would suddenly be in their midst as a living testimony of God's power? But Jesus did what God had sent him to do. He said, take away the stone. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, uh, for he has been there for four days. Natural. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. Then he had, when he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. And when it happened, just like he had told, the Bible says, therefore many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen that what Jesus did, believed in him. Wow. That's called a revival. An awakening. God had a plan to awaken the people around Job. The people around Lazarus. And actually every single character in the Bible were living under the same circumstances. From Abraham to Noah from Moses to Jonah, from Esther to Je Jesus himself. 
they had to suffer, lay down their life for other people around them. This is what Jesus called us to do when he said, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Next time, I'm going to share with you what God told me when I wanted to know why my wife was acting like another person. See you then.